Today we're going to be doing a quick unboxing of the ASUS P8P67 Pro. So the Pro, um, well for quite a few generations now, since kind of the P45, P35 days, has really represented a fantastic value and usually means dual graphics support. So why don't we dig a little bit further into this one and find out what it has to offer. So first we have the most precise DigiPlus VRM, so that means digital voltage regulation. We have Bluetooth built in as well as USB 3.0 built in. It has a UEFI BIOS, which means you have full mouse control over the BIOS versus the older style where you use only the keyboard to input. We have SATA 2, or SATA 2, SATA 3, 6 gigabit per second ports on this particular board. Over here we find out just what kind of a board this is. So it features the Intel P67 chipset, which means you have full support for the Intel Core i5, Core i3, and Core i7 processors on LGA. 1155. P67 also supports all of the overclocking features of the K series and turbo boosted processors, unlike H67, which does not support them. However, also unlike H67, it does not support the onboard video on these processors. So let's just see if there's anything else on the back here. Four ports in total for USB 3.0, that's good. More about the Bluetooth, more about uh, the Ultimate Turbo Processor, energy efficiency all around. You can pause that if you want to read that, I suppose. And I think that's pretty much it for the outside of the box. Let's have a look at the inside. Wow, the board's right on top, look at that. But I'm not gonna let you see it just yet. I am going to make you guys wait. And we're gonna look at the accessories first. So, ooh, this is nice, check that out. USB 3.0 internal header, I hate those pass-throughs. And then we have four additional USB 3.0 ports for the back of the case. We have two SATA 2 3 gigabit per second cables and two SATA 3 6 gigabit per second cables, although please note, there is nothing physically different about those cables other than the color. We have an IO shield. We have an SLI bridge. We have front Q connectors for the front panel case plugs as well as one front USB 2.0. We have a user's guide for DigiPlus VRM as well as the Bluetooth. And then finally we have a full user's guide for the motherboard, an ASUS sticker as well as a DVD which you should completely ignore, throw away, and download the latest drivers and utilities off of the ASUS website. Here we have an anti-static bag which contains Dun, 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 a motherboard! So this looks an awful lot like the deluxe version of the board that I've had the pleasure of tinkering around with and I'm quite impressed by. So why don't we just start in the middle of the board where the CPU socket is. So this, as I mentioned before, is an LGA 1155 socket. Please do not try to install your LGA 1156 CPU in there. It will probably break the board and the CPU. Here we have cooling for our digital VRM, which I'm just going to see if I can count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Looks like 10 plus 2 phase power going to the CPU, so that's pretty good for digital. And then, let's see, moving up, we've got our 8-pin power connector exactly where it belongs in the top left hand corner of the board. We have our CPU 4 pin connector here. We're using the quick install ASUS style DDR3 modules, uh, uh, module slots. So that means that this side does not open and close. You just open up the one side, slide in the module to the one side, close it and clip it in. Here's the memo K button. So the memo K button, I actually had to use this for the first time today. And uh, what you do is with the system off, instead of pressing the power switch, which uh, this one, unlike the deluxe version I'm tinkering with, does not have an onboard power switch. So instead of using the power switch, you press the MMOK button, it boots up the system with a safe setting for the memory, so you'll be sure to post every time. It does work. Here's our 24-pin power connector in its ideal location along the right-hand edge of the board. And moving down to the storage, oh, no, no, not storage yet, USB 3.0, conveniently located in the front of the board, well, rather, the front of your case. So if you have front panel USB 3.0, this is a great place for that. Love it. Here is four ports of SATA 3, 6 gigabit per second. Two of these are running off of the Intel chipset. Two of them are running off of a third-party chipset. These four are SATA 2, 3 gigabit per second, and those are also running off the Intel chipset. Moving down, we have our front panel. So that's your power switch, reset switch, uh, power LED. Here's three USB 2.0 front panel headers. So that's a total of up to six ports or six devices. Here we have our front firewire as well as our front audio out. PCI Express slot layout. 
pretty happy with this one. You can see it has seven total expansion slots, which I always appreciate because six, especially if you're running dual graphics, simply isn't enough in some cases. You can see right here, we have one, two, three PCIe 16X slots, although please note, only these two are gonna run at anything resembling 16X. If you're running a single graphics card, you wanna put it here for full 16X operation. If you're running two, and this is a limitation of the P67 chipset, unless you're putting on additional chips, such as an NF200, these are gonna run at 8X and 8X. If you install a third, they will run at 8X, 8X, and 4X. And bear in mind, this 4X is gonna be coming off of, not off the uh, PCIe lanes on the CPU directly, but rather through the south bridge. Well, it's kind of an archaic term now, but I'm gonna call it a south bridge because I'm lazy. And so it's not ideal for graphics card use, although it's fine for something like a RAID controller or a really high-end network card. We also have two PCI slots, and I pretty much agree with the placement of them because if you have two PCI Express graphics cards that are both dual slot, remaining you will have one PCIe 1X slot up here, you will have one PCI slot, and you will have one PCIe 4X slot. So that's a pretty good mix of expansion options on a more value-oriented board. Nice to have that one legacy PCI slot available to you. So we have two dedicated PS2 ports, one for keyboard, one for mouse. We have digital audio out in both flavors, optical as well as coaxial. We have one, two, three, four, five, six USB 2.0 ports, one eSATA, one powered eSATA, two USB 3.0 ports, gigabit ethernet, as well as 7.1 audio. And here's something to note. Asus is actually using the Intel gigabit ethernet that is included on the chipset. I believe it does cost them more to license it, so most motherboard manufacturers put on third-party chips, including ASUS on previous generations, but now they are using the onboard gigabit ethernet, which apparently has great capability. So thank you for checking out my unboxing of the P8P67 Pro. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.